Hi, my name is George Pearson and this special Photoshop Elements video is part of a series that I have on doing photography techniques for wedding photography. You can see a few examples in here from the different videos. Now all of these are using images that are available free on the internet and I have a link in the description for you to download the videos if you want to work with the same images that I'm using in my video demonstrations. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements wedding photography tutorial, we'll be looking at how to create an invitation card. Now this invitation card is pretty straightforward, pretty easy, but it has a nice look and it's, you know, kind of gives you the right feel for a wedding. Let me just show you how this whole thing is done. Notice we have a couple of pictures in here as a background picture. Picture of some rings in here as a background layer. And that's, as you can see, just in a coloration. It's just the black and white versions of that. Text on top. Very slight glow around the text to make it a little bit more legible. Okay, let's go ahead and see how this is done. Let's just get this file out of the way. Here we go. Now the pictures I use. There are two pictures right here. And these are both from the internet. These are both free downloads and the link of course is provided in the materials description. So we have this ring picture over here. We'll use the middle part of that and then we have this background picture. Now we need a basic file. So let's make a new file. File new blank file. And for this I have this one set, I set this set to pixels, there we go, and there it is, 1800 by 1200. This happens to be the pixel setting for a standard size of 6 by 4 as you can see there. So it's a standard Photoshop Elements file, just looking at the pixel version of that. And the resolution is 300 because this is going to be going for print output. Choose OK. Just double check that there's inches of so 6 by 4 standard postcard size resolution 300 choose OK and there it is bring this up in size a little bit and the first thing I'm, I'll be doing is just to bring our images into this file so here's this first picture over here grab the where it says background layer just drag it on top of this file and let go there we go and I can now close that that's done Let's go over here, grab this one here with the rings, same thing. Just grab the layer, drag it on top of this file, and there it is inside the file. We can then close that. So we have our elements now inside of the file. Let's hide that ring image. Let's go here to this one, and on this I want to resize this. Now it's just a background image, so you don't need to keep your resolution perfect. You don't need to worry about distorting it or not. So I'm just going to grab the control handles here, and then drag this out until it fits the size. There we go. And I'll go until it snaps right to the edges. Just making sure that we snap right to those edges. There we go. So I'm just filling the background with that image. Now we had this toned down a lot. And we had it sitting on top of a yellow layer to give us that kind of old-fashioned look. So let's just hide that for a moment. Come down to background, make a new layer above the background. We're going to fill this layer with a yellow color. Now I have it already over here in my color picker. You can see it's right there. What I used was F9E 9BD if you want to be real picky about that or Hue 44, Saturation 24, and Brightness 98. But in reality, what I'm doing here is I'm in the middle range of the oranges down here, kind of orange, a little bit of a yellow into that orange, you know, right in this range in here. And then it's fairly light and just a little bit off on the saturation, just, just knock the saturation off just a touch. So it's not clear to the top, which is full saturation. And it's over here oh, about one quarter of the way in from the left hand side. Anything around in there will do just fine. Okay, choose. All right, there we go. So we have our, our color, just a real light tan kind of a color. We're now going to fill this. Go over here to the paint bucket tool, click in there, and there we go. That easy. So we filled our background color. Now that we have this background color, 
we can then take this layer and blend this layer into that background color. So we'll be using a blending mode right here. What I want in this case is to darken the background color. So come down here to darker color right there. Click on that and that darkens the color. But notice that we're still real strong. So I want to bring the transparency down on this. Just pull your opacity over here. And the setting I used in the demo was 35%. So I'll just type in 35 just like that. Okay, at this point you can look at this and make any changes you want. Now, you know, this is kind of a dark edge right up there and a lot of dark over here on the right hand side. So I'm going to pull this up a little bit here and pull this over a little bit. Just expand the picture and get rid of some of that darkness that's in there. Just taking those just off screen and making the flowers a little bit larger in the image. Now this part, this is just an artistic decision, you know, take it wherever you want to take it. But I just want to make things a little bit larger here and fill the background up a little bit nicer with those images. There we go. So that gives us our nice background blended into that yellow color in behind. And again, I used the darker color at 35% to blend that in. All right, next we want to put a yellow band right down the middle of this. A nice yellow band, same color as we used before. Let's make a new layer up here. There we go, new layer. A couple of ways of doing this. You can come in here and create a selection in the middle here like that and then fill your selection. That's one way, let's just deselect that. Another way is just to come in and fill this whole layer with your yellow and then grab the sides and pull the sides in. So this is real easy, just kind of visualize that. And what I'm looking for is about 50% of the area. So if I, let me just, let me just hide hide that. Actually, leave it right there. There we go. So if I had a guideline in here, pull the guideline from the ruler, bring it into the center. It should snap to my center point. There we go. There's my center point. If I now divide the left hand side about in half, which is about there, divide the right hand side in half, just about there, that's the space right in here that I want to bring in this layer. So let's pull these sides in. There we go. Choose OK. I can then hide those guidelines. We don't really need those. That was really more for explanation. So we have our center area. Now I want to have this fade right here. I want to have a nice blend on these two sides. And that's easy to do using a filter. Go up here to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. You see right there, that's so at 42.9 right now, but if I if I pull this down, there's there's no blur. If I begin pulling that to the side, you can see how it begins to blur that layer out. And somewhere around 50 pixels or so gives you a real nice soft edge on that. I'm just going to type in exactly 50 here. So there's without, and there it is with that Gaussian blur, giving me that soft edge. So far, so good. Now, we want to have our rings in here. I want to just have them kind of centered like that in here someplace. I want to, to keep the roses. I'll let them overlap into the area over here. That's fine. I want to get rid of all of this stuff. So I'm just going to erase out. I'll leave the reflections in here. I'm just going to erase out. So I'll use our eraser tool and I have it on a soft brush, as you can see. Just choose any soft brush. It doesn't matter if you have a soft brush on there. 200 might be nice. So there's a 200 soft edge, soft brush. Opacity is at 100, and that's fine. And I can now just begin to come in and just kind of erase into this. It doesn't need to be perfect. I'm just 
coming in around the roses and I'll leave those rings down below kind of soften the edge up there I don't want to have any hard edges on this and I'll race into the side a little bit there and then just set that so that the rings are about centered on the image you may want to you know play around with that once you get your text on there so that gives us that bit. Now, we want to blend this into that background yellow area so it just fades in. And we'll do that again by handling the blending mode up here. What I want is just the luminosity values. I don't want to have any color in here, just the luminosity values. So, go to our blending mode and come way down to the bottom down here, luminosity. There it is. So, it's just the black and white values of this, the lightness and darkness values. Once I have it here, I can see there's some dark here I don't want, there's some dark in there I don't want. So let's go back to our eraser tool. And I'm going to come in and just ease in a little bit more, get rid of that. Let's bring this rose down a little bit over here. There we go. So that's pretty good. See our rings real nice and distinct. But I want this as a real background element, so let's bring the opacity down on this. Same thing, just bring your slider control back until it looks nice to you. Now the setting I used was 24%, so I'm just going to type that in. There we go, 24%. That just puts it in there as a background, a background read on that, so we have this nice little ring bit. Okay, that takes care of the imagery. And everything's real soft and real subtle, as you can see here, which means we can put our text on top, and the text will be real easy to see. So we need a new layer up here for our text. I'm going to set the colors here back to their default settings. That little button right, right there, just kind of hiding right there. That's our default color settings, black on top. And then we'll take our type tool. I'll be using two different typefaces in here. One typeface for our main section and then a second typeface for our, our secondary section. They can all be on the same bit of text, that's fine. I want that centered. The first text is going to be large and the setting I had for that was 30 point, but let's first find our text. You want something really fancy in here, so I'm going to scroll down a little bit. I have a real nice fancy typeface in here. There are tons of great typefaces online. The one I happen to have here is called Vivaldi and it's Vivaldi Italic, real fancy, scrolly kind of a typeface. And let's set this at 30 for this picture. Your size will depend, of course, on the size of your overall image you're working on, but 30 works out good for this postcard size. I'm just going to click right in the middle here someplace, just like that. Now I'll just type in my text. There we go. I just made up these names in case you are curious. So there's you know the wedding reception. The next line is our line for our date. So you can have that line right here if you want to in this fancy typeface, or you can have it down here in your more subtle typeface. I'm gonna come down one line and let's switch our text at this point. I use just a standard Times New Roman italic. There we go. And let's bring our size down to 14. Okay, now I'm going to put in the rest of our text. So, May 24, 2005, and we'll put in our, our, look, our time here is 2 p.m. and then our location. Just like that. And then simply arrange this by pulling this around until it's exactly where you want it. Now, if you want to be real specific on this, just pull in a guideline from the right hand side. It's going to snap to the middle of the page. Right there, there it is. 
guideline. Actually, let's make this release. I'm just going to get rid of those guidelines, clear the guides. And there we go. Last thing we need to do now is to put some more separation in here. If we zoom in on the lettering, you'll see up here it gets a little bit confused against this darker rose. In this area, it's fine. No problem there. Over here, again, because the darker area in behind it gets a little bit confusing. So what we want to do is we want to give it a slight glow. Do that. There we go. Give it a slight glow around the letters so that we can hide that background. So we don't see the glow really. We'll use the exact same color as our background color in here. So let's just go up here to our type layer. And I want to come in and put a layer effect on that. So layer, layer style, style settings, glow, and outer glow. And then we can take our eyedropper here and actually grab this background color. I'm on the, on the wrong layer for that. So I'm just going to type in the number. And this is the exact same number. I'm going to show you how to do this so we don't get too confused here. Let's go back to one of our layers there. Grab the eyedropper. Click on that layer. That gives me that color in here as the background or as a foreground. Click on that one. There is the number or the letter rather. The hexadecimal code. So I'm just going to take this, right click, and copy. So that's pulled right off of this layer using the eyedropper. That's the same colors we have up there. Same thing. Back up to our text layer and then layer, layer style, style settings and bring our outer glow back on again. Here we go, outer glow. Click on this little bit here and then right there we can just right click and paste and paste that color back in again. So this is the exact same color we used on that background. Choose OK. So I now have an outer glow with that color. We can't see anything here because it's pretty small. So let's just bring these sides. You can see right there as I bring that up, kind of up and down, you can see how that glow happens in there. So bring that up just enough so you can easily see the wording against that darker background. There will be no effect in here because it's the same color. So that's that's real nice. So there we go. There's that effect. If it's not quite enough, just bring up the opacity and make it stronger, stronger effect, and just kind of rock back and forth a bit until you get just the effect. What I want to do is is come up far enough so that I no longer see it as an outline. It's just kind of a soft color, and there's right there. So on this one, that's 29, and at 90 percent, and it looks good on this side as well. Okay, choose OK. And there we go. There's the wedding invitation. Let's just click on the background layer and I'll back out just a touch here. Hold the Alt key down and click. There we go. There's our nice wedding invitation. As you can see, fairly straightforward and using just some found images that I found on the internet to give us those graphics and then a nice use in here of this solid color area to make it easy to see the text and the whole thing is set at 300 pixels of course so it can be easily printed out and at standard postcard size as well so this is ready to go for a printer the last thing you'd want to do would be to save this in whatever format the printer needs for your file you talk with your printer about that and ask them what what is it they want you know do a save as they may want to have a bitmap file for that you know they may want to have something else so simply ask them what kind of file format they want to have on that. So there you go. That's how to create a wedding invitation. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.